Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's take a look here at a tool called Shell Check. And what this does is you can run it against your shell and bash scripts, and it'll just give you improvements on what you can do to make your code base a little bit more consistent and stick to best practices. So if you're a Python or Ruby developer, you might be familiar with tools like Flake 8 or RuboCop, and uh, Shell Check is no different, except it's for shell scripts and not Python or Ruby. So off camera here, I just created a, a very simple bash script here. And what it does is, you know, we have a function here and we're gonna call this function. And basically the idea is if our welcome message is hello, then we should be greeted with a secondary message here that says you are greeted with hello at the date time right now. It also echoes out uh, the welcome message that we have defined here. Now, I know you're looking at this script and you're probably like, Jesus Christ, Nick, like, what did you write here? What is this monstrosity? There's so many things that are inconsistent and wrong, but that's the point. So actually I'm gonna go over to a second terminal here and you can see I even ran this script a couple of times off camera. You can see that it just echoes hello. You know, there's many things wrong with this script. So it's almost working, right? So there's our echo of hello, but since our welcome message was hello, we should have seen this message here as well, but we did not see that. So let's actually run shell check against this script and we will see what went wrong. And I will go over how to install shell check uh, a little bit later in this video, it's super easy. Basically, I mean, you can do it now if you'd like. You can just brew install, app install, pack man install, like whatever OS you have, chances are it's in your package manager. So I named this file shell check test here and I'm just running it against this file. And you can see that, uh, you know, it looks like a bag of M&Ms here, right? There's a lot of different colors, a lot of things that went wrong. You know, it looked over the script line by line and it was like, yo, you have some issues. And uh, let's start with the first one here. It says, uh, look, you need to define what shell you're using. You should add a shebang at the top of the file. Like it didn't say at the top of the file, but you know, if you've written some shell scripts before, you know, you need to add this at the top of the file. So if you look here at our script, then uh, we don't have it at the top of the file here, right? And that's something we need to fix. So I have a snippet here set up where you can just type in this with them and hit tab and there you go. So now we have our shebang. So let's go back here and we will just rerun shell check. And now notice this big red scary message, this one over here is no longer here because we fixed that issue. Now, if we just go on to the next one in the list here, and this is basically how you can use this program, right? So let's say that you wrote a bash script in the past. Maybe it's like hundred lines, 200 lines, 30 lines, doesn't really matter. You know, you can run shell check against it and just tackle these issues one by one, you know, from top to bottom. So it says here, okay, on line six, it says in POSIX shell, local is undefined. Interesting, okay. And then it also says secondary to this line that we should probably declare local or you know this variable here separately to avoid masking return values. That's an interesting one, but uh, let's go and tackle this one first. So you can see here, if we go back to the shebang here, it is set to shell, not bash. So maybe that's one thing that uh, we wanna support here. So I don't know if you know this about bash, but when you're inside of a function, you can create local variables but apparently that's not really something you can do with uh, native shell, like POSIX compliant shell or whatever. You need to actually explicitly set bash as your interpreter here. So let's go ahead and rerun this and see what happens now. Notice how now it just says that, you know, we should probably declare this separately, but that other message went away. So, you know, that's something that's like super, super like obscure, right? That's something maybe you wouldn't really necessarily know off the top of your head, but, uh, yeah, shell check just exposes that. Like, so you don't need to keep it in your brain. Uh, you can just depend on shell check to let you know when things are wrong. So, okay, it says I should probably declare and assign this separately uh, to avoid returning or avoid masking return values. And uh, before we tackle that one, you know, that that's really related to like something like this. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, pretty obvious what the problem here here is, right? Like this should have been the date command, not the data command. But like in a real world script, what you might do here is, you know, run a shell or a subshell here, right? Get the output of some program and then assign that to a variable. And maybe you just decide that you want to just redirect all of the errors to dev null so that this variable, you know, wouldn't contain those errors if they were to occur. And then later on down in their script, maybe you just reference that variable to get the output, you know, yada, yada, yada. But uh, the issue here is like in our if condition, we're actually checking to see if the last run commands exit code is equal to zero. 
But in this case here, like the data command doesn't exist, right? It's not like a, a program that I have installed. But since I'm redirecting the, the errors to dev null, if I actually run this script here, we never get any type of feedback that there was actually a typo. Uh, and this is a very common typo, right? Saying data instead of date. So, and, and let me just demonstrate that. If I, if, I re, if I remove that and I just run it like this now, you know, we're gonna get a big error here from, uh, from Bash because it'll just be like, look, the data command is not found. But you know, in a real world script, maybe you do have the output being redirected to dev null for errors, so that wouldn't come up. So let me revert that to how that was here and just fix this so it's like the actual date command. And uh, you can still see though that this condition is failing, right? Because, uh, you know, maybe now the exit code is zero, but there's an, another part to this condition here where we say the welcome message needs to equal hello. And uh, you can see here, you know, when you do dollar assign one inside of a function, that is going to reference the first argument that you passed into the function. And don't worry, I'm going to get to that other uh, shell check issue over here in a second. But, you know, just tracing the code base, you know, back when we actually call this function, we are passing in that welcome message variable over here. Uh, this one over here, that's hello. So you would think now that when you call this function, and we're doing a string comparison here to make sure that uh, hello equals hello, you would think that would evaluate to true. But actually, let's maybe just jump ahead a little bit and take a look here at the next uh, warning that we get from shell check. And it actually says that expressions don't expand in single quotes. Maybe you should use double quotes for that. Now, if you're like a Ruby developer, you know, it's pretty idiomatic Ruby to use single quotes whenever you're dealing with, uh, you know, a string like this where you don't need to do any interpolation, you know, any like uh, template variables or things like that. Uh, but, you know, in Bash, it's, it's pretty similar, right? You need to actually use double quotes if you want to interpolate this variable. Otherwise, it's actually taking as a raw string. So like this would have been literally dollar sign one if that were single uh, quotes. And now we're just going to change it to double quotes. Basically in Bash, um, you know, I don't know the answer to this off the top of my head, but I always use pretty much double quotes unless I know I really want to use single quotes. So now, you know, I save this file. Let's rerun the script here and see if this changes any of the output. Output is still messed up, but let's see what Shellcheck has to say here. Maybe there's uh, less warnings this time around. So it, it does look like we fixed a couple of warnings here, right, for this one over here on line eight. Now it's just down to being like, look, you should probably check that exit code directly instead of uh, indirectly using dollar sign question mark here. So let's take a look here. What actually went wrong here? So my message here, like, let's just do some debugging here, right? Let's say error echo one, uh, just like it is here. And let's just make sure that equals uh, hello. So we'll rerun the script here. Okay, well, it looks like it's not being passed in. Well, geez, what's going on here? Like we're passing in this variable, but why is it empty? Okay, well, let's go back to shell check here and, and see what happens. Well, if we take a look here at some other warnings, ah, look at this. Welcome message is referenced, but not assigned. Did you mean welcome message? Whoa, that's pretty useful, right? Like undefined variables with typos, like very subtle typos. I mean, you probably saw this one because you've been looking at the script for five minutes now, but, uh, Something like that in the real world, super, super possible to happen, right? And uh, if you didn't have shell check, that's something where you can go off on a Googling spree, like, you know, maybe you think your if condition is wrong or something like that, when really it was just like a simple typo. And, and now that we fixed the typo and we go back to here and we rerun the script, there we go. So you were greeted with hello at and the actual date time of right now. Uh, nice. So. Our if condition is, is pretty nice here. We're getting this echo now because our greeting message was hello. We fixed our uh, typo there. But now let's see if there's anything wrong with shell check still. So, so, so let's run that a little bit here. And uh, yes, so going back to the other one here, it says we, sh we should probably separate these things out. So let's actually do that. And this is a very simple fix. You just do local now, and then you can just assign your variable like that. And now if you rerun shell check, that message goes away. And, and now we're just left with one. Now, the reason this is important though, is because if you do the assignment and your subshell here, I'm pretty sure no matter what, the exit code of this is going to be zero, even if this command fails, 
because like literally assigning this variable was successful. So if you do, uh, you know, dollar sign question mark here, it's always going to be zero. And uh, I suppose we can actually check that because I'm sort of a little bit curious to see how that works uh, on my own here. So let's see if we just do echo uh, like this and we rerun the script down here, exit code is zero, meaning the command exit successfully. So now let's actually change that so we know it's something that should blow up. And we rerun that and look at that it is still zero, even though this command like doesn't exist, you know, I can go crazy and do something like that and it's still going to be zero. And, and that's why shell uh, check recommends that you separate those assigns. So let's do that. And uh, we'll go back to what we did here. Everything is good to go there. Uh, our assigns are separated. Our conditions in our if statement are all good. And if we rerun uh, shell check once more here, we still do have this warning here where it's like, you know what, you should probably just run your command directly in the if condition instead of uh, checking the return value like this. But in our case, you know, this is a super contrived example, but maybe we don't actually wanna just move this date time command to be over here in the condition itself because we actually wanna reference the date time value over here like later on in the script. So maybe like at the very start of the script, you do something like getting the date time now and then you do a whole bunch of work, maybe for like, I don't know, 500 milliseconds, like whatever is in your script. And then you wanna reference that date later. So like, you don't wanna like inline it now, you want you want the actual date time of at the start of the function, not later on. So maybe in this case, what we could actually do is we can ignore this message from shell check because every once in a while, that is something you may want to do. And shell check makes this very easy. So all you have to do is type in, uh, well, first of all, you have to go one line above where the error occurred. And then you just type in shell check disable, and then you have to put in the uh, code here. So the code here in this case is SC2181. So we can just do this. And then if I rerun that should be clean. And uh, this is really nice because if you have like a shell script on GitHub or something like that, and you have it hooked up to some type of continuous integration server like Travis CI running shell check, before you do your uh, integration tests or whatever is a great way just to do a quick pass on your code base to make sure that things are in good shape. You know, especially if you're accepting uh, pull requests and things like that. Like if someone else were to modify this code and you know maybe they didn't assign this on two lines, you would wanna have that checked immediately and uh, you can totally throw that up into uh, a CI script. In fact, actually, if I go to uh, github.com, if I go to my repo here, I have this invoice script here. And I've actually made a video about this one before. I'm not signed in because I'm in Firefox here. But yeah, like this is a, an invoice script here and it is a shell script and I'm using uh, shell check here to check things. And actually, yeah, there we go. On this line over here on 107, you can see that I'm actually disabling this one here because in fact, I don't wanna have quotes around this variable, but shell check will make sure that I have quotes around this variable. Otherwise it, you know, it gives me a warning. But in this case, I'm saying like, actually, you know, I don't want quotes around this one. And then if I go to my, uh, whoop, if I go back to my CI script here, uh, I mean the Travis one over, over here, you'll see that I'm actually installing shell check and then I just run it on my invoice script before I run my tests. So like, that's how you can integrate it nicely with GitHub. And it actually looks like this invoice script is, is failing. So I'm gonna check that one off camera maybe. Uh, no reason to get into that here. But yeah, back to shell check. So, you know, we kind of took a look here at how shell check works. Uh, I use this all the time in all of my shell scripts, even the ones that, you know, I don't push up to GitHub because really it just helps you create a more consistent code base. Uh, but, you know, as mentioned before, if you want to install it, if you just go check out shell checks, Git repo here up on GitHub, uh, there's many, many instructions on how to install it. So yeah, yeah, you can see here, you can just uh, stack install, you can apt install it, Pac-Man, Emerge, you know, blah, 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 blah. There's a brew install. Basically, you know, all supported major operating systems are included. Also, if you kind of just want to mess around with it, there is this shellcheck.net site that you can go to and you can just start pasting in uh, some shell scripts here and it'll give you live feedback. So, so for example, you know, if I just did like hello, like, okay and then i just echo hello or something like that 
Uh, you can just see that shell script is running in the background. That's a little bit small. You can just see that it's running in the background here, just giving you tips here. Like, okay, well, look at this, you know, add your shebang. And that's basically what we saw in this script before when we didn't have it. Yeah, and that's about it here for shell check. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. As usual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.